Hey, good morning, Mount Zion. Welcome back to our last day of Ephesians 3 this week. Um, today we are going to be talking about Paul's sufferings for the gospel. Um, and so we're going to look at Ephesians 3 verses 1 and 13. So it says, for this sake, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for your sake, the Gentiles. And then down in 13, therefore, I ask you not to lose heart in my tribulations on your behalf, for they are your glory. Yeah, so Paul is in prison, and uh, we think about where we're at today. Look at where Paul was when he wrote this. And he says, don't be discouraged and don't feel bad about where I'm at. It's for your glory. I mean, that's what the heck's he talking about there, you know? Yeah, I mean, Paul was willing to suffer for, for the gospel. And yeah. when we... When we look at this, I mean, there's a debate among scholars about where where Paul is, and um, if you were in my Colossians class this uh, past winter, we talked through kind of the different options there. Um, I guess the simple breakdown, some the kind of the traditional view is that Paul is in Rome, that this is at the very end of his his life. Um, th there's another view that he's in prison in Ephesus here um so the things that point to that view there's a guy that paul lists at the very end of colossians and they think that colossians philemon um ephesians and philippians are kind of one bundle of letters they're, they're the prison epistles they call them they're the, all the letters that paul wrote when he was in prison um and so there's a guy at the end of colossians who is friends with paul and they're arrested and we see his name also come up in the book of Acts, and they were arrested in Ephesus. And if Philemon is part of this bundle, um, he tells Philemon that I'm I'm coming soon. And we know that Paul's arrest, if he was in prison in Rome, that was the end of his life. He ended up dying in Rome. Happen. So right. if he was going to be coming soon to visit Philemon, um, it would seem that he wasn't in in Rome. I mean, that's kind of my opinion, but. Um, most scholars and even most of the early church held to Rome. So that might, he maybe had two imprisonments in Rome. We don't know, <laughs> but it doesn't matter where he's in prison, but the purpose is that he is, Paul is so on fire for the gospel and he's willing to lay down his life for it. And he's in prison and he made the most of it. He didn't uh, sulk. He didn't scream about, you know, get me a lawyer and get me out of here. He wrote letters to the churches. Um, Today, to relate it, what I would say is he could have written these letters while he was in quarantine. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is not suffering for Christ being in quarantine. No. And we have to look at scripture in light of today. So uh, let's read about Paul's in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start in verse 23 to 28, and we're going to read about his sufferings and listen to the long list of what he's gone through. And let's kind of compare our lives to it and go, what are we worried about today, right? I think mm -hmm. that's how we see it. Yep. Uh, Paul says, are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. He says, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently. Listen to this been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. When he was pelted with stones, I think that's when he was stoned and they thought he was dead. Yep. At least that's yep. what I would think yep. of. Yep, I agree. Um, I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, uh, in danger <laughs> in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. I, <laughs> wow. wow. You know, and he, he says, I mean, he says, why am I talking like, he actually says, I'm kind of bragging here. And I, he doesn't even want to brag about it, but he's stating the facts of what he's gone through. Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, it's crazy going through all of that. And then you read 
Ephesians, yeah. Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon, those letters that he wrote in prison, and they're some of his happiest letters. Yes. <laughs> they're the ones that we usually go to when we're kind of looking for some encouragement or joy. Right. Right. I mean, I can look at Paul. Yeah. Christ who strengthens me, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> he has so much encouragement for the churches in those letters. And you look at the ones where he's out of prison, like, um, the Corinthians and Galatians and that, and he's sure. pretty much in their face. In yeah. those, but it, it truly is. It, it's just kind of interesting to see it that way of Paul's, Paul's attitude in his heart in, in the face of persecution is still mm -hmm. peace and love. It's now, Christ like. Mm -hmm. You know, we're image bearers of Christ. So, how do we take this? I mean, it's not an easy, uh, it's really hard to tell people to cheer up right now and not be angry and upset, but we shouldn't be angry and upset. Uh, we got to look at Jesus and how Jesus dealt with things. And that's what Paul did. Yep. Yeah. So I guess our encouragement today is, yeah, we're not really facing persecution yet for the gospel. And I mean, we're in quarantine and we should, um, we should, live at peace, trust God, and allow him to be our peace. I mean, even Paul in the worst situations, I mean, he's being thrown in jail, beaten, persecuted for the gospel. We just have to stay in our houses. True. And we're and not really suffering. But and we can do the same thing he did. We can pray to God for deliverance, too, and that the virus ends and that everything will work out. That's yep. what we have. Amen. So, amen. All right, church. So... Stay safe, um, and we will be back with you next week for some more of these, studying Ephesians chapter 4. Um, we'll see you online this weekend, Saturday at 5, Sunday at 9 and 10.30. We'll see you online. Amen.